You guys see the title, it is back. Again. After yet another year between episodes, I'm pretty sure I put the Gunner one up on June 11th, 2020. At least, if you don't count the re-ranking video that I did for this series last month where I changed about all the rappers to update my opinions on them, if you haven't seen that, go and check that out first, and then come back to this one about the one, the only, rap game baby. Let's no, 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 not that one. Lil Baby. Lil Baby is who we're going to be talking about today. In the past few years that he's been rapping, Lil Baby has just skyrocketed in popularity, but the most important question that is on everybody's mind right now, what does CDTV think about him? Everybody's definitely asking themselves that. Well, to form an opinion on his music, I listen to Harder Than Hard, Harder Than Ever, Street Gossip, and My Turn. Speaking of that, you know what else can be harder than hard? Getting a nice, smooth trim low down below the belt that's free of any injuries that leave you hurting. But, I have some good news. Today's video is sponsored by Manscaped, genuinely my personal favourite brand, when it comes to men's grooming products, and today, I'm gonna share with you how their new Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer can help you out with any of those problems you have when trimming down below. Look at this box, bro. Even the box is nice. That's how you know you're dealing with the high quality product right here. First of all, just take a look at this thing. It is beautiful. And if you're wondering why I would highly recommend this, well, first of all, it has ceramic blades that are designed with skin safe technology, which reduces the chance of any cuts occurring so that it doesn't get ugly while you're trimming. Very important, as I'm sure you'll all know if you've ever had an accident with that before. It stings for a while, leaves you emotionally scarred. Speaking from personal experience, I have not once had that issue with Manscaped trimmers. It eliminates that problem forever. Plus, you have this LED light that makes sure that your vision's clear at all times. What's more, it's cordless and waterproof, so if the shower is your shaving haven, so to speak, it's ideal for that. And to top it all off, you have four different trimmer guard options depending on the length that you want your hair to be. So, to become one of the two million plus men worldwide that put their faith in Manscaped for men's grooming products, me being one of them, click the link down in the description below and use the promo code CDTV for 20% off of your order and free international shipping. Much love to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. I genuinely love working with them so much. Did you guys notice that I managed to pack a whopping seven little baby song titles into that ad read right there? I'm too slick with it. One of them was literally called How, so that's kind of cheating that could be used in any ad read, but I'm counting it anyway. So let's not waste any more time. This is CDTV Productions, and is Lil Baby one of the worst rappers in the game? Or not? Let's talk about it. You can hear the money in my voice. Vince Adora 2020, I ain't have a choice. And I got a Euros with the Lemon Guinea boys. I'm just gonna lay it out straight away here. Voice and delivery is easily the weakest aspect of Baby's music for me. If a rapper's presence on a track could be compared to facial hair, Lil Baby would be some peach fuzz. Wispy. Thin. You can just about notice that it's there. If music is wiggly air, then Lil Baby's rapping is a very light breeze. And sure, some of this is down to his natural voice just sounding like that, but I also think a lot of it has to do with the fact that he is a relatively new rapper. We have to keep in mind, Lil Baby only started rapping in 2017, and as a result, I don't think he's fully found out how to make his vocals hit strongly yet. At least not consistently. There is some stuff he definitely does right when it comes to rapping, which we will get to soon, but when it comes purely to voice and delivery, in my opinion, I think you can really tell that Baby hasn't really been rapping for that long. It's still an issue with his current music, but it was definitely the most noticeable with his pre-My Turn stuff. I don't know any other way to describe it than just sounding really thin. It's especially noticeable when rappers with a stronger presence feature on his track. 
Facts. Now I'm taking charge. Just got off a roll. Make the Brody take the charge. Been doing that with them sticks, yeah. He is getting a little bit better at finding his voice, and certain tracks on my turn do display a bit more vocal strength from Baby. It's still not super consistent, but at least he's moving sort of in the right direction. And some of his features give him the opportunity to try something new, such as Do That by Stunner for Vegas. Baby raps more clearly and with a little more aggression on this verse, and it's actually one of my favourites from him. I wish his voice was a little more emotive and powerful like this a lot more often on his own music. Now, supposed to be someone serving in one of them houses with pounds. How the fuck are you rich? Who the hell said that life was a bitch? I got too many bitches, but one light to live. At most, you only hear more emphasis in his voice on a few tracks throughout his own mixtapes, on songs like Dates, Narcs, and Southside. Get used to me bringing up Southside, by the way, because that is one baby track that I love. But as it is, it still remains the weakest element of his songs right now for me. He doesn't have one of the worst voices I've heard from doing this series. Oh my god, believe me. He doesn't. Like, I would never describe it as unbearable, it's just incredibly underwhelming to me and doesn't really evoke much emotion. 9 times out of 10. His voice is improving very slightly over time, but it's still not something that I love. And that's why I'm going with a 3.5 out of 10 for Lil Baby's voice and delivery here. And now let's talk about my personal favourite part of Baby's music. His flow. If there is one thing he usually does right, it's this. Even if I don't love his voice, his flow can just really make it sound like he's going in on a track sometimes. Now let me talk about features first because that's where Baby usually shines for me. That non-stop flow on Wants and Needs by Drake, I thought he was gonna slow down eventually but he just keeps going. We walk around with them bands and I breach it. This gun ain't gonna jam and I blow, I ain't missing. I'm dropping hit after hit, I'm just chilling. But I'll send a hit while I chill with my children. That is my favorite little baby feature right now. Don't Need Friends by Nav. He came in so smooth with that clapping thing and then just weaved in and out of the beat for the rest of his verse. Pop out again, trap, nookie, blindfold, prospect. If we're talking about the flow, I love how Baby performs on all these tracks. And I specifically say if we're talking about the flow because some of them, I'm looking at your prospect, are mixed pretty poorly against the beat, like Baby sounds kind of out of place there, but the flow is nice. And luckily, this is something that mostly continues in his own music. Southside mention number two, baby. Just listen, just listen. He kills that track. It's not the most complex flow ever, but when he's just constantly gliding over a beat, I think it works really well. From Harder Than Ever, through to Street Gossip, through to My Turn, the flows are consistently good, honestly. I don't really like most things about the Street Gossip album, but the flows and features are the saving graces on there. Harder Than Ever has highlights like the aforementioned Southside, Leaked, Cash, and Throwing Shade, and there's some really great flows on My Turn on songs such as Get Ugly, Heating Up, Live Off My Closet, and Forever. Live Off My Closet is another one of those top baby songs for me. I can live out my closet before I go broke. I got too many cars, I ain't paying no note. No, too many tango to sleep by my choke. I be sipping no syrup, I ain't driving no boat. So I definitely like his flow more than other aspects of his music, but. Is there anything bad about it? Well, earlier when I mentioned that his delivery makes it sound like he is pretty new to rapping, well, that is sometimes an issue that applies to his flow as well. Nowhere near as much, it's just there are a few tracks where it really feels like Baby's words are not hitting the beat in the right way. Deep End from Drip Harder is an example of this that's always stood out to me, it just sounds really clumsy the way it's rapped, but unfortunately that isn't the only display of Baby's somewhat offbeat rapping sometimes. Not a major issue overall by any means, just something that I thought was worth pointing out. Also, it's not a huge negative by any means, but other than the few songs that I mentioned earlier on in this segment, I usually just find Baby's flows to be good and enjoyable, but not necessarily great. 
As a whole, I think Baby knows how to ride a beat pretty smoothly for the most part. He rarely does anything from a flow perspective that blows my mind, but it's the aspect of his music that I find myself enjoying the most frequently for sure. That's why I've decided to go with a 6 out of 10 for Baby's flow. I don't want to go any higher than that because I don't think his flow is outstanding or super unique, but it is mostly consistent and enjoyable, so I think this rating accurately reflects how I feel about it. Is that in my cars and my bras and my reef? Yeah, they say it's cheaper to keep it. Yeah, fuck it, I'm real, so I love it. Now we get to the fun segment. Have you guys ever seen Lil Baby explain his own lyrics on Genius? It really is a mess. Also, shout out to Genius.com, by the way. That's always where I get, like, the lyrics that I flash up on the screen or the little cards that show all the song details and stuff. I always get all the images and stuff from Genius, so shout out to them for existing. Great website. Let's read one of his annotations together, shall we? The line in question, We ain't gonna do that internet beefing. That's for the bitches, dog. The explanation for this very simple, very clear line. I feel like why I don't do the internet beefing, why I say that's for bitches or females, cause we grown men, it's just too much. That's just straight for women. Everything about arguing over the internet to me is for a woman. It's like girl traits, like insecure or messy or you feeling jealous. All those female traits in that way. No matter what the situation's about, if you get in your feelings enough to go on the internet and put everybody else in it, it's like you're seeking attention. Most women do that. Now, I don't really like to overuse phrases that are thrown so loosely around Twitter that they've really lost their meaning at this point, like gaslighting, problematic, misogyny. But man, Lil Baby really went all in with a pretty misogynistic rant to explain one very simple line. First of all, it's ironic seeing a man called Lil Baby say, we grown men. Second of all, I've personally seen more men beefing over the internet than I've seen women beefing over the internet. And third of all, jealousy and insecurity are not female traits. And it's perfectly okay to be male and feel those things from time to time. Feeling jealous or insecure doesn't make you any less of a man and you're only hurting yourself if you think that it does. Obviously, if it's to an extreme level, you should try and get some help with it, try and reduce those those feelings, but feeling them to a certain degree every so often is perfectly fine. It's human emotions. You know, from this annotation plus his song lyrics, I'm starting to think Baby might not treat women the best. There's the hook and life goes on where he basically says, yeah, I cheated on you, but shit happens, bro. Or close friends and emotionally scarred where he tries to make excuses for cheating on his girlfriend. My main bitch trying to leave me long cause I fought another hoe. I'm like, baby, I know I'm wrong, but this just how life goes. I cheated on you, I wasn't there for you, but I said I'm sorry. What's the big deal, huh? I'm not factoring this majorly into my lyrics rating. It's not uncommon for mainstream rappers to rap about being pretty bad to other people. But I thought it was worth pointing out. When it comes to everything else, Baby is a pretty typical trap rapper when it comes to the lyrics, if you ask me. But there are some really great bragging lines he has in some songs that I want to point out. I could live off my closet before I go broke is a pretty slick line to brag about how rich he is that his clothes alone are valuable enough for him to live off of forever. Do That once again is one I have to bring up because Baby honestly had bars on that track, one of his best verses. My dollars and followers match is such a short, simple brag, but it works so effectively and it just sounds smooth. That rolls off your tongue. For the most part though, even if he is slick with some of the bars, he rarely ever has that many that blow me away or catch my attention. Don't get me wrong, I think from a writing perspective, Baby can put out a nice verse. It's just usually the typical hip hop subjects wrapped about in an occasionally clever way. But here's the thing that gets me. It really feels like Baby is capable of more than what he puts into his albums. An obvious example I could point to here is The Bigger Picture, a little Baby song which actually made it into my best hit rap songs of 2020 video. I think that's written in an incredibly solid and level-headed way that takes the issue it wants to talk about and tackles it from a few different perspectives and really takes everything into consideration. It really surprised me the first time I heard it and it was a shame to hear Baby say that he doesn't really plan to do anything else like that going forward. It's one of the best songs in his discography. It's one that shows that a decently strong level of lyrical talent is there. I just think he's not too bothered about showing it, so he only puts about 50 to 60% of that 
into his album music. That's how I feel about it, but of course, I'm always open to hearing opposing viewpoints in the comments down below, and it might even change my mind a little bit if the stuff you're saying makes sense to me, and helps me see it from a bit of a different perspective. Baby does have introspection and emotion in his writing at times, it's just not super common. So, for these reasons, I'm gonna give Baby a 4 out of 10 for his lyrics, which, believe me, is not actually a super low number in this segment. The songwriting talent is there, and he does word things in a cool way, but I just wish he let the fact that he can really rap when he wants to show through a lot more often than he does. If you've watched quite a few videos in this series, then you'll know that the beat segment is typically a pretty positive one. This is not one of those cases. In pretty atypical fashion, far worse rappers in the game, I feel like Lil Baby's beat selection is very noticeably dull in generic mainstream trap instrumentals, with no unique traits. And I get it, Baby is a trap rapper, so obviously he's not going to be rapping over super experimental, unique production, but the beats that he does pick are the furthest thing from interesting. And it doesn't need to be that way just because you're a trap artist. Like, look at his close, close friend, man. the man we covered in the last episode, Gunna. He is in the same sort of lane as Lil Baby, being a mainstream artist that utilizes trap production, and most of his beats are so damn smooth and nice to listen to. And you can tell what a Gunna type beat is when you hear it, because there are noticeable patterns and elements to them. Lil Baby type beats, on the other hand, don't really feel like they have any unique blueprint to them. And you know where I think the majority of this issue comes from? Mr. Cook That Shit Up Quay, Quay Global. I remember seeing these memes going around Twitter and it's like that one where the guy throws something in the pan and it makes all the fire come out and people were saying that was Lil Baby and Quay collaborating. I've never understood that because that is the deadest duo. Nine times out of ten, when him and Baby work together, it sounds like he gives them beats that were cooked up in three minutes, using an arpeggiated loop, some piano keys, and a standard trap drum pattern thrown over it. And that is how you cook that shit up, Quay. How's our signature dish? Bland as fuck. And this man produced so many beats on Lil Baby's early work. Street gossip is a huge offender when it comes to this, it's mostly done by Quay, and the beats throughout it are so damn bland. I come from a different type of cloth, these niggas. I'm on by a different type of car, these niggas. Bottle baby Gucci scroll up. Switch it up and I went global. Young in front of project, fuck the run and got it poppin'. I'm like, fuck a Maserati, but my bitch a Bentley truck. Word on the street, they got a little bit of hit out. Really running Atlanta, I can make a nigga get out. If anything, I have more respect for you, bitch. Now, not to echo too many of my earlier sentiments, but this is getting slightly better with my turn. In fact, one of the reasons why my turn is the best produced baby album to me is because Quay plays a part in only a couple tracks on there. In his earlier music, he was the main producer. It all still is very typical trap music instrumentals, but at least a lot of them go hard, and some of them, like Get Ugly, do have a bit more going on to make them interesting. So, as a whole, Baby is a little weaker when it comes to production than most of the other rappers that we've talked about here. They're just as typical as trap beats can be, and they are getting better as he gets bigger and has access to a wider variety of producers, but on his earlier projects, it really really was a hindrance. Especially street gossip, as I've said. Also, if you want proof that Baby's music would sound infinitely better over some incredible production, just listen to this mix that's up on YouTube that places Baby's vocals over the flashing lights beat by Kanye. That is hard as hell to me. Honestly, maybe Lil Baby's voice would matter a lot less to me if he had some grade A production. 
But, as things stand, I have to go with a 5 out of 10 for this segment. Not much that's absolutely horrible from a production standpoint, just very standard and unexciting stuff on the majority of his currently released music. I can do bad on my own and go by myself. I never needed no help. I needed you niggas, you wasn't right there. And finally, let's talk about how much overall enjoyment I got from my experience with Lil Baby's music. The baby projects I listened to, ranked from worst to best, would go Street Gossip, Harder Than Hard, My Turn, and then Harder Than Ever. Street Gossip, as I mentioned earlier, was just incredibly one note and boring and generic when it came to the instrumental side of things. The instruments here genuinely sound like they use FL Studio preset sounds, which is fine if you don't have a big audience and millions of dollars. Baby's voice I already don't love as you know, all it had going for it was Baby's flows and the features which can only take a project so far. The only songs I took away from this one were Pure Cocaine, Anyway, and Realist In It. Harder Than Hard, Shout Out My Cock, I still don't really enjoy this project and you can tell that Baby was super early in his rapping career at this point, but it's not as lifeless as Street Gossip so it's got that over that project. There is still a lot of Quay production, and Baby's vocals are very amateurish, but hey, date some pink slip bump. It's just above Street Gossip for me. And it was his second ever mixtape, so it's more excusable than Street Gossip for not being amazing, which was his fifth solo project. As for his second best project to date, My Turn, this is the one with the highest production value and the highest highs of any baby project. The first half is honestly pretty damn solid. Get Ugly, Grace if you take 4-2 Doug off it, Whoa, Live Off My Closet, Commercial, Forever, all bangers to a certain degree. But where this project falls behind harder than ever is the second half of the album. This would be the best baby album yet, but the whole second half is unnecessary to me and is significantly weaker than the first. Like you could literally cut the whole second half off this project. Can't explain, consistent, hurting, these are all callbacks to Baby's older, less impressive sound on his earlier mixtapes. The only song I really need from that second half is We Should and maybe Gang Signs for the beat, which is very hard. And finally, Harder Than Ever. Not an album I love, but the most consistently good piece of work Lil Baby has released yet. It doesn't really reach the highs of my turn with its slightly less impressive production, but it is the one that's easiest to listen to start to finish. As far as Lil Baby songs go, I'm Straight, Exotic, Leaked, Bank, Southside, Life Goes On, there's some very catchy songs laced throughout this album. I have to stress, I don't love this album or my turn, so you aren't surprised by my enjoyment rating, but they are the best Lil Baby releases for sure. And so, for my overall enjoyment rating, I'm gonna give Lil Baby a 5 out of 10. Just slap bang in the middle because usually his music is very in the middle for me. He is generally getting better as time progresses though, so that is good. I just don't think I can ever see myself loving his music due to his voice and mostly generic beat selection. Not the worst I've covered here, just mostly average trap music in my opinion. So, overall, all of that gives Wah 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 Bitch I'm the Baby a score of 23.5 out of 50. This places him at the number 14 spot in my worst rappers in the game list, just above Trippy Red, and one spot below my guilty pleasure, Navraj. As I've said throughout this video, there aren't many aspects that Lil Baby is downright horrible in. I just personally think he's very standard and pretty highly overrated, considering he's one of the more generic trap artists out there right now. And while he did rank higher on this list than his friend Gunna, because Baby has been more consistently decent than Gunna has throughout his discography, it's still one out over my turn every day, baby. Fight me about it. Man, this is the longest recording I've done for a video in a while, but I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And if you did, of course, I would appreciate you leaving a like. It's super appreciated on these videos because because of the title, I'm very aware of it, but because of the title, the like-dislike ratio is always uh, very controversial on these ones. So I'd always appreciate you leaving a like and subscribing if you haven't done so already and want to see more content like this and turning on that notification bell if you want to know when new episodes of this series do drop.
As always, a massive amount of love to my patrons. It's crazy to me that we have over 50 patrons now. If you want to support me, the link to that is down in the description below. If you were there, you would get to see this video early, if you're in the $10 tier and above, or if you're on the $5 tier and above, you get to see exclusive Patreon-only videos that no one else will see. So if that sounds interesting to you, you can check that out. And as always, a big, huge shout out to my biggest supporters on there, and those are Tyson, Cyrus Formadoni, Reagan Burt, I Am Region, and Caleb Peoples. Much love to all of you. So that is all I've got to say for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in the next one, and I will make sure that it's not another year till the next Worst Rappers in the Game episode comes out. I've been more consistent recently, so hopefully I can stay true to that. And I will see you guys all in the next one. This is CDTV Productions, signing out.